What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're taking a look at Wintermore Tactics Club. This game is kind of a weird hybrid. It's a very weird hybrid of like a turn-based strategy game and a visual novel, from what I've heard. Where you kind of dance in between like the real world, where the characters are like in high school, but then they go home and at the end of the day they play D&D, &D, and the D&D &D tactical battles are kind of how they're like resolving their demons in real life, and there's other stuff going on. I don't know, let's dive on in. We're going to show off the first 30 minutes or so of this game, see if it's something that you wanted to add to your wish list, and see if there's a little bit of delicious nougat on the inside of this candy. Let's bite down. In the history of wars, the most important conflict of all goes unmentioned. Perhaps it's because it took place entirely within Wintermore Academy, a small northeastern boarding school. Perhaps it's because it happened in 1981 and there was no internet. Or perhaps any tale with the fate of the very world at stake is destined to fade into myth and legend. We can't really know for sure. But I know the War of Clubs actually did happen because... I was there. Wintermore's student debt, or student student, sorry, we're in school right now, the second I see a school and I see the word student, I think student debt. Sorry, that was my bad. That was a very poor reading. You're all gonna have to stick with me here though and understand my mindset. I'm literally never not going to be out of debt for the rest of my life because of my college, alright? Wintermore's student clubs turned against one another and began to vanish from the earth. A great darkness consumed the clubs growing in power until it threatened to plunge the entire human realm into chaos. Well, that's what would have happened, if not for one hero. This is her tale. The tale of how a group of friends saved the world from the War of the Clubs. Dang it, why does this always happen? Tactics clubs in five minutes! I know I left my dice around here somewhere. Gotta pay more attention to where I leave my stuff. Uh, well, where my dice normally are, I have like a box for them. Alright, so we walk around using like a little drag prompt right there, gotcha. Rejection letter from the school journal. They said my story didn't fit the theme of the nostalgia of winter. I guess sometimes you really need to spell out the subtext of dragon werewolves. My dice aren't here though. Alright books from home, mostly from my favorite fantasy shove genre, the uh, clever young women protagonists who don't do what they're told. Yeah, that's all, they're gonna have to abbreviate that one, that's a really, really long, like, you're not, if you use that, you know, because you got, like, Dragon Lance, right? You put that on the book, it's succinct, it's short, it fits on a little banner that you can put at the top with some serifs. That's a, that's a, that's a long series right there, you're gonna have to come up with an abbreviation. My dice aren't here, though. Okay, well, maybe over here. They let me have my own hot plate because I'm just that kind of responsible. Mostly is it to brew tea. Ah, there's my dice, finally. How'd they even get over here? Man, I can't believe classes are starting again already. But at least I have Tactics Club. Today's a big moment in our campaign, and I've been looking forward to it for weeks. Should hurry if I'm gonna get there on time. Alright. Well, let's go to Tactics Club. Is there anything inside of here? Hey, Puzzle Cube. I learned the trick to solving this from a book, so now the magic is kind of gone from me. Yeah, it's just a sequence, isn't it? I got a buddy that can solve one really, really, really fast. Not like world record fast, but if you hand him you hand him a Rubik's Cube in any sequence, he'll solve it within a minute or two. It's a super hard to get fancy and specializing in fan fiction where everybody works at a coffee shop and nothing bad happens to any of the characters. I wish I was a part of that fanfic. That sounds pretty rad. You just get to be around coffee all day, every day, and nothing bad ever happens to you. I'm down with it. Hey, Alicia, you off to club? So jealous. I've been thinking about starting a dog lover's club on campus. Yeah, but see, like, how are you gonna do that? Because you gotta, like, bring the dogs in from other sources. That's a tough part, like, because you're not allowed to have a dog on campus or in the dorms or whatever, so... Alright, so we're in the dorms right now. Love the presentation of the game, by the way. It looks really good. Apparently we gotta go to the classrooms. Hey, Alicia. You on the way to a club meeting? How's the club life? Eh, you know, chilling. Just kinda hanging out. The Wintermore Raven, the school mascot. Hope they don't think that painting a suit on it makes it look less ominous. It's a notice board. There's tutoring, a job. Nothing that really interests me, though. Okay, sounds good. Uh, the art room is locked, so we can't go inside of there right now. I like the animations, actually. I think they picked exactly the right amount of frames for the walking animation. Like, because you do, like, too many more frames and it'll look unnatural. It kind of loses that video game quality. It gets into, like, Uncanny Valley territory. But any less, and it looks like you're just sort of like a 2D picture sliding around. Like, I think that it's, like, it looks like maybe a four-frame animation. 
No, it's maybe five because her hair changes. I was just looking at the sequence of it. Looks good though. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Where is everybody? Jacob, I would expect to be late, but Colin's usually more responsible than this. Maybe I should go find him. Then again, this might be the perfect time to get a little curses and catacombs practice in. Yeah, let's get some practice. Alright, so I set up some dorkling enemies like it suggests in the Catacomb Master's Guide. I'll start with my own character, the Brave Mage, Anjaya. And she can cast Sparks, so I guess I'll put her near the dorklings that are grouped together. Alright, so we want to be like right over here. Looks good to me. Alright, so we'll select her, and then it wants me to... Oh, she actually just has that attack. Okay. Let's see how it looks. Well, I actually really like that cutaway right there. That cut I like that. I like that a lot. It kind of reminds me of Shining Force. Shining Force had like a similar system where you have like the over map and then when you attack somebody it does like a little mini cutscene where the two characters face off and then something happens to the two portraits. I like it very much. It's nostalgic. Now let's put Jacob's character Rogi over there. He's a rogue obviously. He can move the fastest. He has nunchucks, bro? I'm down with it. Okay. I believe. Uh, yeah, let's move over here and smack a guy with some nunchucks. Which is bow! He done been killed. And Colin likes to fight head on with the armored paladin, Eadwald, so he'd be out in the open. Okay. He's. Oh, I thought I said he was tainted for a second. I was like, mm, what's he tainted with? Is he never going to be able to receive a hug again? Like, there's different levels of tainted. There's like, I can wash this off, and there's like, no one is ever going to hug me again. Those are the two different, those are the two different brands of tainted. But he's taunted. We're good. All right, that's all we can do this turn. So let's let the Dorklings attack. Oh, really? They telegraph who they're going to go after. Okay. All right, so what do we got going on here? They've moved into position. Uh, we'll go. Up, they're they're grouped up right here, so I think she should probably just nuke them and take them out. It's probably the best way to get it done. So there we go. Those two enemies have been dropped, and we're gonna take him, move up right here, smack this guy. What happens if I smack him? Is it gonna like move my paladin around? Oh, good. It just travels straight through. I didn't expect that, but that works out. And then it looks like we've just got one enemy left right here to deal with. But practice seems to be going pretty well. It looks like we can also limitedly reset our turn. Maybe I'll try it on the next turn just to see how much you can use it. Like, undo a bad decision, maybe. I've always liked it when game... I'm, a, I'm the kind of person I misclick a lot when I play stuff like XCOM and whatever. And so I really do appreciate it when games include, like, a rollback turn option. Even if it's only, like, once per battle or whatever. I really appreciate that mechanic because I misclick a lot. Like, seriously, I misclick, I misclick frequently. And so I, I love it when... Let's move her over to here and let's try that. Ah, we get two resets for the battle. I like it. I like it a lot. I appreciate that a ton. We'll go ahead and light him up. Looks like our wizard did most of the heavy lifting right there. Very nice. Oh, cool. We get, like, a little rating coins. I hope that's how they do it for the rest of the game. I actually like that a lot better than the, the idea of XP. I like how you get the little tokens or whatever. So if we could spend those on varying things... Be pretty rad. I think I'm getting better. That's enough practice for now, though. I'm starting to worry about Colin and Jacob. They really should have been here by now. I should probably go see if I can find them. What is that thing? Tips and tricks. Physical armor only reduces damage. Okay, magical reduces. Oh, nice. Okay. So apparently it's tips and tricks for the game of cultists and caverns or whatever. Catacombs and cultists. Whatever it was that we were playing. Mm, cat calendar. It's got some jokes. Let's see today's joke. What do you call a cat in a station wagon? A carpet. Oof, the pun. Yikes. With all of the light and airy delicacy of a sledgehammer. Uh, so we gotta find Jacob. I don't know where Jacob might be at. We'll kind of tool around. I like how the in-between space is filled in with actually the... I don't know what you call that right there. The sigil? I don't know, of the school or whatever. Ours was a lighthouse at my alma mater. Uh, let's see here. 
Oh, you can actually see what people are in what location. Okay, so in the library, that's where Colin is, I think. That was his name, right? I'll learn the names shortly. What's this thing, anyway? Some kind of instruction manual for being a nerd? It's my Catacomb Master's manual. I doubt it would appeal to somebody of your intellectual prowess. Dude, I think he just called you some kind of lady boat. Can I have the manual back, please? Late for Tactics Club. Dang, he's right, Skip. We're gonna be late for practice. You got lucky this time, nerd. Hey, buddy. Not again. You all right? I got worried when you didn't come to club. Yeah, I'm fine. I won't let those morons get to me. Kind of impressed you kept your cool. If that was me, I think I might have freaked out. No, oh, I want to start screaming, but I try to think of it like curses and catacombs. Like, we'll study hard and be successful, which is kind of like gaining experience and getting stronger. But they'll just stay the same generic low-level monsters. And, you know, then we'll be able to beat them with a morning star. Metaphorically. Speaking of low-level monsters... Right, 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 right. Today's the big showdown against Count Malgiferous. Sorry, a leader would never be late. Let's go! I gotta give him the Doug voice. I don't know what just happened. I clicked a thing on X and I was going to click on that guy right at the time it popped up. No one believes me about my investment advice because I'm a kid. Well, you know. To be fair, I don't really trust grown-ass adults' advice on investing either. Hey, there you are. What are you up to? Oh. Really, Jacob? Again? Hey. Am I late for club again? Sorry. I got some serious writer's block going on here. Writer's block? For what to write on the wall? Hey, you know what I think it too about writer's block. You want to write the last word in the sentence for me? It needs to be something that really sells our contempt for Wintermore's fascist authority, while at the same time not really acknowledging that authority? Um... Lame. You gotta go with lame. <laughs> yeah, it is lame. You think you could take a break from fighting the man for a second and come fight some dorklings and ogres instead? Heck yeah, this is the week that we fight the evil guy, right? He's pretty fascist. Yeah, dude, I could think of a good line while we're playing. You got the chucks on, though. Alright, so rogie has got seven max health. We got three movement, no armor. Alright, sounds good. I like how it gives us a little character sheet as they join up. Kind of cold out here, but I can rest until I find that butter a butterfly out in winter time. Do butterflies go out in winter time? We don't have winter time where I live. We just have like really hot and really rainy. Uh, John Gentle Roy Wintermore founded Wintermore Academy in 1901, shortly before his mysterious disappearance and presumed death by wolves. <laughs> That's such a random way to die. Was that common in 1901? <laughs> like, well, there was tuberculosis, which really steals all the oxygen out of the room. But coming in at a runner-up, surprisingly, was wolf attacks. Alright, let's go to Tactics Club. It was this door, right? Oh, good, you're here. Sorry we're late. Let's get back to our adventure. Let's do it. Alright, so we've got campaign levels. We've got the Amulet Acquisition. So we've got a battle against a whole bunch of dorklings right there. Some of them have sharp implements. And then we have how many turns we can take. Let's get it done. Okay, for the last few sessions, you've been pursuing the evil Count Malgiferous, who stole Anjaya's magical heirloom amulet. When we left off, you had finally caught up with the thieves. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> the wind blows through the trees. There's something eerie about the field where your foes have stopped. As you peer warily about you, it dawns on you why you find it so disturbing. The place looks to be an ancient battlefield, with cracked armor and abandoned weapons strewn amidst the grass. An enterprising crow picks at an old skeleton buried in the weeds. It gives a gruff caw and flies off as you disturb its repast. You're not sure why the Count and his Dorkling guards have stopped here, but they seem to be ready to fight. What will you do? I say, the amulet of Amar is the guiding star of twilight. Heed its light and it shall guide you back to the path of righteousness. The Dorklings don't really speak humankin? Oh. Then I'll, um... 
Draw the sigil of Amara and the sigil of their god together. I used a stick to draw a picture in the dirt of their god and our god holding hands. Dorklings don't really have a god, they have a sort of warrior democracy and worship only their chosen demagogue. In this case, it's Count Malgiferous. The Count commands his Dorklings to attack. At least we tried the diplomatics. Oh cool, so they will attack whoever is closest. Nice, that's good to know. So they're going after our big guy right now. They're going after our Eidvald. Alright. Well, I would suggest that maybe we move over to here. And if we can land some lightning, I feel like that'll give us a really strong start. I, I do think that our strongest survival prospect right now... The Dorkling Knight's armor doesn't protect it from my magical attacks, right? Right. It's definitely a tactical move for you to fight him. Okay. Uh, if we could wipe out a couple of these, that'd be good. I'm gonna bring him over. I wonder if they get knocked back if it does anything. Because he has the knockback, right? Oh, the knockback didn't work. Okay. Well, here, you go ahead and cut a hole right there and then smack that guy. Oh, he's got armor. My attacks don't really do a whole lot to the Dorkling Knights because of their physical armor, but I've got their attention. Thanks, that should let me hit them with my magical attacks. Yeah, let's go for it. We've got to solve this in like three or four turns though, so... Should probably get it done a little faster. Okay, two HP's fine. We can soak that for right now. Yeah, I could really use her in a better position in all honesty. Although, I think if we go in right here, we'll finish both of them off. And then we can set up our battle lines for the next turn. Because we're going to want her to be in position. Let's kind of keep him back a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. I have units that can act, but I don't really have anything that I can do, so... I do like it that the game actively telegraphs, like, why certain people are being attacked. And, like, there's rules to why things move around. It's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Uh, you go ahead and lightning them. Get a little bit of that off and running. I'm going to move you over to here so that you're closest because we know that's why they attack. And then we'll finish these two off right here. There we go. Perfect. We'll end the turn, and we will allow them to do their thing. We should be able to smoke them with our hokum on the next turn. Oh, really? They didn't attack. That actually kind of surprises me. I expected to get smacked on that turn. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take care of business here. I'm, tr I'm trying to hit par right now for this, entire, for this entire battle so that we can unlock as many of those little sigil things as we possibly can. We didn't lose anybody. We didn't take any damage, but it did take us a little bit longer than the par to get it done. So I guess we uh, we did a little bit of a bogey right there. Although I really didn't see any way that I was going to... I guess I could have moved Anaya. Or Amaya, or whatever her name is. I could have moved her, I guess, northwards to streamline that a little bit. And start her off fighting. But I didn't want her to get mobbed up on, so I'll take it. I'm the kind of person, though, that wants to get a perfect rating on every single battle. So I tend to stall out on things and just replay it over and over and over again. Alright, so you've taken out all the guards, leaving just to count holding the amulet. Just when it seems like you've won, suddenly... Attention all student clubs. Uh, what now? Please report to the auditorium for an important announcement. Attendance is mandatory for all club members. Oh man, it was just getting good too. Alright, well, let's go. It's a bummer. There's nothing worse like... So what we used to do is like... My parents had a barn. When I was like 17 or 18, I was playing a lot of D&D. And so my friends would come over, and we had like a seven-man D&D group. So a six-man party, you know what I mean, with one DM. And we were playing 3.5, and man, we would get there at like six in the evening on a Friday night. And then we would just play till four, five in the morning, like till the sun came up out in the barn, man. Such good memories. Really, really good time. Uh, where do we want to go? We got to go to the dorms? The admin building, more than likely. Yeah, that sounds right. Admin seems like the place we should probably head out to. Hey, Alicia. Fancy seeing you here. I mean, obviously, we both go to the same school and all. Uh, I, bet he, I bet he likes us. He probably likes us. Wait, why is there a caveman in our assembly? Why do we need to be here? Did somebody do something wrong? Did we do something wrong? Um, 
It's probably not about us. All the clubs are here, not just us. Who knows, maybe it's even good news. Greetings, club-minded students! So glad to see you all upholding Wintermore's beloved tradition of student clubs and organizations. Why well, they say John Gentleroy Wintermore himself was a member of the Gentleman's Endangered Bird Shooting Association, the good old Gebsa. Is this going somewhere? As a strong supporter of clubs and student activities on campus, I'm pleased to announce a rare opportunity to prove your club's pride and individuality. All of you will have the pleasure of competing in a mandatory school-wide snowball tournament where the winner is named the Ultimate Club. That sounds like a waste of time. The good news is, it shouldn't be too f tough for us to lose as fast as humanly possible. I know what you're thinking. Why do I care about being in the Ultimate Club? Well, how about this? Uh, clubs who lose in the tournament or refuse to participate will be disbanded immediately. What? Disbanded? You can't do this, old man! We got rights! Unjust! Such a punishment is unthinkable! Surely you can't really mean disbanded. We'll just... We'll lose our club rooms or... Nope, disbanded. Kaput! As in no more special club privileges, no more meeting with other club members, and no more practicing your hobbies with other students. But hey, there's no time to keep grumbling. The tournament's gonna begin this afternoon, so uh, you'll be assigned your first opponent shortly. Trust me, this tournament's gonna be fun. It's a perfect activity to find the ultimate club. You know, I was just about to say something about the fact that the old dude was rocking bell bottoms, but then like it's 1981, which is like, really, you should think of it as like decades. They kind of extend a couple years. Like the 70s had bell bottoms and they kind of like slightly extend into the early 80s. You know what I mean? Like for me as a kid, the 90s didn't actively begin to like 1995. Like, 1994, 1993 were just, like, the 80s light, you know what I mean? This is crazy. He can't, like, really do this, can he? Fascists. I'm trying to tell you. It's only a matter of time before the school got militarized. How are we supposed to compete in a snowball tournament? This is a disaster. We're gonna lose the club. Calm down. Let's head back to the club room and we'll regroup. We'll play a little curses and catacombs, get our heads on right. We've waited long enough to get back to our adventurer today. So why is this guy a caveman? A strange thing to say. If I didn't have the historical reenactment club, I'd have to find a new fashion style. Oh, he's in the historical reenactment club. I gotcha. It's not responsible to speculate, but the principal's got to be going through some stuff in his personal life, right? He's trying to work through some issues by making everybody have a snowball fight? You there, girl who's talking to me. Do you think the stress of administration has finally caused Principal Enfield to snap and seek vengeance against the student body for years of ingratitude? Sure? That does seem like the simplest explanation, but sometimes a mystery is not as simple as you would like it to be. I'm going to assume that she talks like that because she's an enterprising journalist. <laughs> he tries to stop me from listening to music. I'm going to end him. That was me in high school. I hate to let you know. But I was pretty I was pretty punk rock in high school. Like I had like I had like the denim jacket with the patches all over it and everything. Like I was working out so the arms looked good. Had the Doc Martens. I was looking pretty dope. I'm gonna be honest with you. Wanna buy a doctor's note excusing you from the snowball fight? Well, if we didn't sew up for the fight, we still get disbanded for not participating, right? Yeah, that's true. You want to buy a... What's the word for a club doctor? Like, a doctor can excuse a club for some kind of illness. It's got to be a word for that, right? Maybe. Oh, let's go do some more tactical stuff. Unbelievable. How does the principal think that it would raise morale to ruin all the things the students care about? It's just a trick. Maybe he's bluffing to get us to care about the snowball fight. Guess we'll have to hope so. Let's get back to the club room. Whether Texas clubs ends tomorrow or not, I just want to finish the campaign arc. All right, let's go. The Young Monarchists. Okay. Like, we don't really have, like, schools like this. I guess we must in America. Maybe my family's just too poor to where, like, I never knew that these schools existed. Like, I don't know. I've never heard of anybody going to boarding school where I live on the West Coast, but maybe it's a thing. Hmm. Well, if it isn't Wintermore's most laughable club, the Make Believe Brigade. 
Why are you acting so surprised to see us? It's our club room. You're calling us lame? Aren't you the guys that literally are trying to bring back a monarchy? Apparently they're trying to bring back the monarchy. Yes, we, the young monarchists, firmly believe that monarchy is simply the most sensible form of governance. If you had read any of our pamphlets, you would be well convinced of this. Monarchy is way too complicated for your stupid nerd brains. So we gotta beat you down. In the snowball tournament, I mean. I mean, we're your first opponents, so, you know. Hmm, how unfortunate for you, Tactics Club. Enjoy your last day in this quaint little club room. You know, they're really kind of all in on this battle thing, right? Jeez, what a bunch of jerks. Yeah, they seem to be the worst, but we can't really let them distract us from what we came here to do. There's a chance that this might be our last session. Let's at least finish this battle and get Anzaya her magic amulet back. I'd find it really hard to focus on RP and playing a tabletop game if all this was going on. Even though you defeated his guards, you see Count Malgiferus grinning slyly. Fools, he cries. You've no idea what malign powers lie dormant inside this amulet. Allow me to show you. The Count raises the amulet of Amara to the sky and begins to chant. I try to grab the amulet from him. Before you can reach him, the amulet clouds over. The sky dims to a sickly iron hue and tendrils of darkness sprout unnaturally from the ground itself. You're held fast in place and cannot move, and to make matters worse, the Count and his fallen minions have morphed into blood-sucking monsters. Oh no. And Jaya's out in the open, totally surrounded. I don't think I can take that damage. Well, you know, I got a grappling hook, and it turns out it's pretty useful in this exact situation. Alright. Oh, I can actually, I can yoink her out of danger? Yeah, do it. Nice. Pulled to safety. And then you know what we gotta do. We gotta hit him with that sparky right there. Get him with the old sparky spark. Yep. Do a little bit of old uh, electrical engineering. You start out over here, and we'll just try to pinch them at this border right here. I don't really want them to go any further, so I'm pretty sure he's not gonna move around. Like, I really sincerely hope they don't have any way to jump across the water, but if they do, this is going to get really, really ugly really quickly. Oh, this could work out swimmingly. <laughs> yup. Let's do it. That ability is pretty powerful. Like, it's really getting the job done. This is exactly what I was hoping would happen. Like, this is precisely what I had hoped would happen. Uh, let's go ahead and move Rogi up to like right there. He can't really nunchuck somebody that close, so I'm going to wait for them to group up a little closer. Like, I think they should all be in one big line. Oh, no. It didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Okay. Well, here, smack him. we got to make a gap. And then what I would really prefer to do is let's move you into right there. And it looks like we can move through enemy lines. What I'd like to do now is uh, that was not what I wanted to do. Okay. I wanted to move her up, but I guess I'll take the attack rate. That wasn't exactly my intent. I wanted to smack right there and then have her move up and shock those two. But hopefully if our movement's good enough, we'll be able to do something on the next turn. We'll have to, we'll have to uh, wait with bated breath on this one. Yeah, we're all right. We'll be able to pull something out here. She appears to be my principal tool for dispensing with the enemy. Very nice. I think we made it in under par on that one, too. Hey, we made it in at par. Very nice. I will take it. My name is Splattercat. This is Wintermore Tactics Club. Hope you guys enjoyed your stay. Uh, you can get the game down below in the description. This is a new game that's on offer from Versus Evil. Uh, so far, I've seen nothing to dislike about it. If you've ever been looking for something that's kind of, it's actually got a JRPG feeling to it, in all honesty, where it's really like hyper focused on like the narrative and sort of describing the characters, it kind of reminds me of games like Vandal Hearts, in all honesty. Uh, if you enjoyed this, definitely check it out down below in the description. You can also check out my Discord and my Twitch stream. 
Uh, those are both important links for the channel. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today we had Wintermore Tactics Club, a pretty cool little visual novel meets tactical tactical RPG that I think you guys might really, really enjoy if you're into that sort of thing. I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Take care, everybody.